today's video I'm continuing to try to get the most use out of the 500 watt monorim m365 motor well it's actually fake it's not monorim motor it's a knockoff which i bought from aliexpress link in the description below and the initial idea that i had was to install this motor in front of my white m365 and leave everything else stock replace the battery replace the controller it didn't take me too long to figure out that it's not going to work because i don't want to ride at 60 kilometers per hour having my motor battery suspension and all the weight on the front of the scooter i need to try and distribute the weight more equally what i don't particularly like is the weight distribution when i put this huge battery pack on the handlebars you can see how shaky it is it's really like counterbalancing the weight of the front wheel which is not that big and it's like pushing it sideways so easy so you can easily get into a wiggly woggly situation which i wouldn't like to be at all even with the wheel at the back, I really need to focus on my driving in order to keep the handlebar straight because they really would like to wobble with the battery installed on the stem. Do not install batteries up there. Batteries need to be down in the deck. On the good quality road, as it is right here, which is like perfect quality asphalt, it's not a big deal. But when it gets a little bit shaky, I don't want to think of what could happen. And if I would try to install the 500 motor into the rear of my stock M365, I wouldn't have physical or mechanical brakes because I cannot fit the front disc brake unless I have monorim installed on the front. And as it is a knockoff motor and not original monorim motor, I assume this is the reason why the disc brake cover would not fit on that motor because of the different diameter of the bearing. 35 mil bearing and 32 mil bearing 15 mil 17 mil i cannot fit this i cannot fit this cover on the 48 volt motor unfortunately Therefore, it did not take me too long to realize that I will actually mount the 500 watt motor back on my full suspension Xiaomi M365 and try and get the best use of that. So here it is, the 500 watt knockoff motor from Monorim on the back of my M365 and the Konik, Konik suspension, whatever you want to call it. While the scooter is charging a little bit and getting ready for the drive, we can take a look at the front brakes. So I mounted this Monorim kit. It didn't go that flawlessly as I wanted because if I would not add some extra washers here this red part is actually protruding forwards and then it's actually hitting the disc brake bolts these bolts uh, right there zero gap and the wheel is not even tightened if I tighten the wheel this disc brake mount is hitting the disc so I had to put some washers on, I still will need to work on it, but for the time being at least I have really really decent brakes. Practically nothing is mounted on the permanent basis. The controller is installed with double sided tape, the front disc brake has these washers, I will need to grind down the aluminum parts and just make it permanently. The battery pack of course will not stay right here, I will make a new battery pack and mount it down there in the bottom. I will probably make a little extension right here. And even the display is now mounted on the top of the handlebars. The cables are like tied with zip ties and I don't like how it is. But I have to do temporary things like this just to figure out what is the performance of the motor, what is the performance of the battery. Do I need a bigger pack or this is enough before I set things permanent. This display right here is called Cycle Analyst and I think it's version 3 or something like that. And the good part about this controller is that you can use the controller without the Cycle Analyst. What Cycle Analyst do, it provides you a bunch of different statistics, how many watts, amp hours did you use, how much did you regain, what were your max RPMs, kilometers per hour, voltage, watt hours, whatever. You can see things like maximum amps that you have given to your motor, you can see the minimum amps that you have given to your motor, you could see the voltage sack, so you could see how low did your battery pack get when you gave it the most acceleration. The same with speeds and the same with temperatures. You can set automatic disconnection of your controller if it exceeds some set 
maximum temperature values. You can also see the resistance of your battery cells and how many cycles, how many times have you charged the battery pack since installation, total watt hours that you used and so on and so forth. So there is a bunch of useful statistics that you can use with this display. Furthermore, if you have digital buttons like these, you can actually set, you know, for example, how many max amps you want to give out of your controller to your motor. And you can set up to 15 levels. So you can see now we have five levels set here. So one, two, three, four, and zero is five. But you can set up to 15 levels and you can set minimum and maximum values. So I kind of like this display, but it gives me a lot of headache in terms of how do I put all these cables in there? How do I close this lid so it's waterproof and so on? So I'm still considering if I want to keep the display with the buttons, maybe I will hide the display down below or maybe I'll just take it off completely because the, this controller can run without this cycle analyst whatsoever. While testing the scooter on the table and setting the max speed to 100 km per hour, this happened. As you can see the tire really wants to get off the rim. So be careful when trying to push the limits on your M365s or other scooters that are not designed for that. Oh and at 60 km per hour it looks like this comes off a little bit but not that much right? Still scary as hell. Right of the start you will see that the acceleration is not something fantastic. We can reach like 30 kilometers per hour pretty fast, but going from 30 and up this is where it starts to really shine. So we are now at 2100 watts and going 45 kilometers per hour. GPS will have some lag, 19, 23, 31, 34 and we are 2100 watts 45 kilometers per hour so acceleration doesn't feel as great as with two motors now don't get me wrong the scooter accelerates quite fast but it's not the feeling where it's trying to throw you off the scooter like on the double wheel drive electric scooter the brakes the brakes are insane i can just press on the front brake and my rear goes up like there is no tomorrow the front disc brake is really really good i can block the front wheel my scooter my rear of the scooter will go up one more thing i have to mention that this controller allows for cruise control which you can set the duration yourself it can be one two three four five eleven twenty whatever number of seconds that you want which is always nice and it also supports the regenerative braking meaning the harder i press the handle the harder the rear wheel brakes so i have front and rear brakes right now and i can stop really really efficiently which i like very much all right so for the next run i will have my bms application open because i would also like to see how much watts does my BMSC is that in line with what the controller's dashboard is showing so one kilo oh yes it is so if I go full throttle my BMS also shows 2000 more than 2000 watts We're going a little bit against the wind so we are at two kilowatts all the time the max speed is a little bit less against the wind it's still more than enough it's like 46 48 kilometers per hour 
Lowest voltage that we see it was 55.7 volts. And the temperature of battery is 26 degrees, which is nothing. So apparently my battery pack can run on 2 kilowatts like there is no problem whatsoever. Right now I have the Phase Runner Suite application open. So I'm going to show you now all the settings that I use for the Phase Runner. In case you want to install one, you find it a bit easier to tune it up. If you're ordering Phase Runner, don't forget to order the programming cable because it does not come in a set. It's unfortunate, but don't make that mistake because you will have to wait longer just to be able to set up your controller. So when you first connect the Phase Runner, you will need to run the auto-tune procedure after you connect it. I will read my parameters and as you can see the KV number is 20.17 RPM and the other number that you need to know is the number of magnetic pole pairs. Now if you're not using specifically the same motor I would encourage you to open the motor count the magnets divided by two and then you will know the specific number. When you know these two first numbers all the other numbers will come together by auto-tune procedure. Your motor limits, set them as you wish. I set mine at 2800 watts and I ignore the max phase current. Now all the battery limits, you need to know what is the maximum battery current that you're going to allow to draw and what is the maximum regen current that you're going to allow to charge if you're using electrical brakes. So you can also adjust the voltages when the regen starts so you don't try to charge the full battery and when the regen stops. Also the low voltage cutoffs, these are the things that you need to know and they depend on the specific battery that you use. All of the other parameters on this page are kind of custom so you can make a screenshot and adjust it in the same way or you can go to Green Technologies website or their YouTube channel and you will find the description of all these parameters. On the second sheet which is advanced setup you can set up your throttle and brake mapping. I do that by looking at the dashboard where is actual brake voltages and throttle voltages and set them accordingly. Now if you're struggling with some parameters and you, or you can't adjust your phase runner on your M365 don't hesitate to reach out to me over Instagram messages. I will reply and I will try to help you the best I can to solve your issue. You might be interested why I'm recording my video now in the forest. Well, because it's raining again. All in all, I think that this setup is the keeper. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep one motor at the back. And until I figure out how I can fit disc brakes on the front motor and install a motor there, my scooter will be rear wheel drive. Because I have fantastic brakes, I have decent acceleration and I have enormous maximum speed. Nevertheless, there is still a lot of left to do. I have to fix the battery. I have to take it from here because that's really unstable riding and the center of gravity is very high. I will put the battery down into the deck and for that I will probably make a custom battery myself. I will have to figure out what do I do with the screen, clean everything up, make the cables nice, fix the front brakes, make the new front fender mount and you can all see that in my upcoming videos. See you guys, have a good day.